The video for today is alarming since it appears like the retail apocalypse is still engulfing the sector. As you may have heard, there are fewer options for in-person shopping experiences for customers as an increasing number of clothing retailers close. It's no secret that conventional brick-and-mortar establishments have found it difficult to compete with the emergence of online retailers such as Amazon, and the epidemic has only made matters worse. Consequently, we're witnessing an increasing number of stores retreating from malls and reducing their physical presence. In this video, we will talk about famous clothing stores our closing stores around America. If you're new here, be sure to give a thumbs up on this video and hit the like button. Adding to the list of retailers that have already closed individual stores this year, including Talbots, Abercrombie and & Fitch, and Eddie Bauer, is The Children's Place, which has announced plans to close over 100 sites in 2023. Reputable retailers like J. Crew and TJ Maxx are also joining the fray by closing their physical locations. The industry is going through a difficult period, and traditional brick-and-mortar stores' future is uncertain. One thing is certain, though in order to survive, shops must adjust to the changing retail environment. It appears that TJ Maxx is closing some of its locations, joining the ranks of numerous other shops in doing so. The good news is that they intend to move to Guilford, Connecticut, which is close by. This relocation will give the neighborhood a new place to serve clients in addition to maybe generating employment possibilities. It's never easy to witness businesses closing, particularly in rural communities where they can be the only choice available to the locals. However, it's critical to keep in mind that retailers are always assessing their business plans and making adjustments to the dynamic retail environment. Although TG Maxx has not yet formally announced that it is closing its Clinton location, the move to golfer's story indicates that the brand is targeting a former Walmart space. TJ Maxx would be wise to make this move since it will give them extra retail space and possibly attract more customers. It's crucial to remember that other retailers are also interested in TJ Maxx's former Walmart stores because they sometimes provide large spaces at a cheaper cost than starting from scratch. Brick and mortar retail may continue to exist even after actual locations close. Numerous shops are experimenting with novel models that combine the personalized and store buying experience with the ease of online shopping. The emergence of dark stores, which are effectively miniature fulfillment facilities or warehouses, where customers may place online orders and pick them up in person, is one example. These dark stores are a desirable alternative for merchants trying to streamline their operations because they frequently have low overhead and staffing levels. It will be interesting to watch how these new forms develop further and affect how retail is shaped going forward. Customers and the neighborhood will undoubtedly have questions and concerns, as with any retail relocation. The city authorities' confirmation that TJ Maxx intends to move and that the store is actively pursuing the required permits is comforting. Even yet, losing a store can be a bitter pill to swallow. It's critical to keep in mind that change is unavoidable and that we must prepare for it. We'll be closely monitoring TJ Maxx's next step and any developments in the matter in the interim. J. Crew appears to be continuing to reduce the number of physical locations it has across the nation. As news of yet another California business closing broke, there is no official timetable yet for the closure of the J. Crew store in Sacramento's Arden Fair Mall. The need for a nearby business to expand into a portion of J. Crew's 5,600 square foot location led to the company's decision to close, according to Arden Fair marketing director Nathan Spratlin. For local brand enthusiasts, this may be disheartening news, but there might be some hope for the future. Spratling indicated a desire to see J. Crew reappear as a mall retailer in the future. It is unclear, therefore, if the shutdown was a tactical decision to better fit with an omni-channel strategy, or a symptom of more serious problems within the business. Following the closing of another store in Portland, Oregon, by J. Crew earlier this year, comes this news. The company spokeswoman gave a similar explanation for the closure in Sacramento and pointed to routine reviews as the cause of the Portland closure. While retailers keep navigating the industry's shifting terrain, in the upcoming months and years, there's probably going to be more store closings and changes. Not all is lost for J. Crew, though, 
since the company is still operating its J. Crew production footprint. The firm has declared that it will be opening new J. Crew factory outlets in different parts of the nation. For instance, the Portofino Shopping Complex in Shenandoah, Texas, the Denton Crossing Shopping Area in Denton, Texas, and the Bay Terrace Shopping Center in Queens, New York, are all scheduled to welcome a new J. Crew factory store. A new J. Crew factory store is also scheduled to open at Wheaton, Illinois, did not a Squareties shopping center. In addition, a new J. Crew factory store will open at Trent Home Plaza in Columbia, South Carolina, to commemorate J. Crew's homecoming. In January 2021, the brand had earlier announced the closure of its stores at the mall. As stated by the government, J. Crew plans to use these new sites to broaden its consumer base and maintain its national presence. As the retail sector keeps changing, even well-known brands like Gap and Banana Republic are under pressure to change or risk going out of business. Retailers have had to reconsider their tactics and shrink their physical footprints as more consumers have turned to internet purchasing as a result of the pandemic. This shifting environment is reflected in the recent statement that Gapping will close 50 to 55 Gap and Banana Republic outlets this year. This action is a part of the company's larger plan to close about 350 non-strategic stores in North America by the end of 2023, a goal they are still on track to meet. A number of factors, including declining sales, rising rent prices, and shifting consumer preferences, are probably the driving forces behind the decision to close the stores. However, there is some good news about Gabbing. Athleta and Old Navy are both owned by the firm two companies that have had success recently. In reality, Gap Incorporated revealed that Old Navy sales had climbed by 13% in the fourth quarter of 2022 at the same earnings call that the closures were disclosed, in contrast to the year prior. In conclusion, the pandemic has expedited the trend towards e-commerce and online purchasing, posing a challenge to the retail industry. The closing of physical sites for a number of brands including Eddie Bauer, J. Crew, TJ Maxx, Talbots, Abercrombie, and Fitch, and more, has been interpreted as a hint that the retail industry is going to collapse. This interpretation is based on the fact that these companies have all recently announced plans to shut down their stores. The future of retail may be determined, however, by the trials of some retailers with novel formats, such as dark stores. These stores mix the convenience of online shopping with a personalization that can only be found in traditional retail settings. Even though it may be difficult to shut down a store, change is unavoidable. And in order for merchants to thrive in today's competitive retail environment, they need to be inventive and flexible. It is essential to keep in mind that change cannot be avoided and that we ought to maintain an optimistic outlook regarding the future of retail. It will be intriguing to watch how these new forms continue to grow and to see how well-known firms like Gap and Banana Republic react to the demand to stay current in their respective industries. As consumers, we have the ability to shape the evolution of retail in the years to come. Whether we do our shopping in person or online, we are lending a hand to the business owners and brands that have earned our respect. In addition, retailers are continually attempting new store designs such as dark storefronts and hybrid shopping experiences that combine purchasing online and in physical stores. The impact that these new advancements will have on the industry in the years to come will be fascinating to watch. What are your thoughts? Do you enjoy buying online? Or do you like the customized in-store buying experience better? Tell us in the comments section below. Remember to like and subscribe for more updates on the retail industry.